labs are important and we use them to get started. And I, I know there's so many really detailed labs, right? And if someone is chronic or really has a weird situation, then I need more labs. But for the most part, for 80% of the people, we can look at a standard set of serum labs. And I know there's way better detailed labs, but for the most part, you know, people say, oh, I need to retest in this many Yes, a few things, but I don't need to retest everything. We're going to treat the person, not the labs. Hey, friend, I'm so excited that you are here with me. We're going to be chatting about bioidentical hormones today. It's an epic topic. We're going to try to cover as much as possible. So if you know what hormone imbalance you have, maybe you know that you have low testosterone or high estrogen or low DHEA, or maybe you have no idea what's causing your hormone issues, what hormones are high or low. Perhaps you've gone to a doctor and they've said all your hormones are fine, but you're feeling like there's something going on. Today's episode is completely absolutely for you. So our guest today is Ricky Brandon, who's a health and wellness advocate. He and his wife, Candy, started hormone balance centers because they could not find the high level of care that they desired for their own family. After years of searching, thousands of hours in training, research and trial and error, Ricky finally landed on the process and system that mixes traditional medicine with alternative medicine and helps people feel great again and live younger and longer with natural hormone replacement therapy. So we're going to be talking about hormones today. I want to preface before we get into the conversation, a couple of concerns that I have with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And we didn't get a chance to really get into this in today's episode in the interview with Ricky. And so if you listened to the recent episode, episode 420 that I did with my friend Andrea Jones of this year. It released on May 9th and it's called Understanding Menopause with Andrea Jones. In that episode, we talk about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy and how it can be a really good tool if you've addressed root causes or if you understand your root causes. And so I want to go in a little bit of detail around the root causes that I see behind each hormone dysregulation, because we didn't really get into that today. And I don't want you to listen to episode 420 and be like, well, wait, Andrea and Leanne were talking about how to not use bioidentical replacement therapy and why you shouldn't necessarily use it. But then in this episode, we're now talking about how we should. So how do we rectify this? And This is the thing about individualized care is that it's going to be different for everyone. And of course, we are limited by a podcast that releases to thousands of people on a weekly basis. And so this is all just educational pieces. And Ricky and I chatted about this at length around understanding your body, being educated around the choices that you're making. So I feel like this is a big education piece. So I wanted to get into this before we cut over to the interview. So in the case of testosterone, when there's a testosterone imbalance, either high or low, we might also in the underbelly of it, We might be dealing with thyroid dysregulation that's causing the testosterone to be wonky, adrenal dysregulation, nutrient imbalances. I see this a lot when we do hair tissue mineral analysis or when we do blood nutrient panels that there's going to be certain nutrients that are off, specifically like in the case of zinc, for example. Um, Stress plays a big role in testosterone, uh, pituitary imbalances, obesity, gut dysbiosis. So what I'm saying here is if you have severe gut dysbiosis, you can support your testosterone left, right, sideways, and upside down. But it's not going to make a big difference until you address the gut dysbiosis. So there are a bunch of different practitioners and how we see things, the order of operations that we're using. And that's the beautiful thing about picking a practitioner and even just picking a format to follow. It's going to be very different depending on what you know about your body, what you know you respond to. If you are currently supporting testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, maybe you have some DHEA in there, maybe you're taking a thyroid med and things still aren't working, you are not properly addressing root causes and it's literally a whack-a-mole game. Whereas for other people, 
They're just low in testosterone. They need the good stuff. They take it and they feel better. So root causes underneath progesterone imbalances are going to be certain medications, adrenal dysfunction, prolactin that's elevated generally due to stress, nutrient issues, and gut dysbiosis. So again, gut dysbiosis plays a huge role in testosterone issues, progesterone issues, and elevated estrogen issues, okay? So if there's gut dysbiosis, there's going to be more beta-glucuronidase that's going to reactivate estrogen and cause a whole bunch of issues, okay? In the case of estrogen, root causes behind a high or low estrogen are going to be things like not eating enough, nutrient deficiencies, stress, high insulin, poor liver health is a big, big, big one, post-birth control use, again, gut dysbiosis, behind a DHEA level that's imbalanced. We're going to look at inflammation, blood sugar dysregulation, obesity, yo-yo dieting. A big piece to DHEA that I see time and time and time and time again, because this is a hormone that is created by the adrenals, is a reduction when we reach the menopause time, okay? So oftentimes DHEA will start lowering as the liver gets more burdened. The adrenals get more burdened because they are creating now our progesterone and our estrogen and the DHEA just kind of flatlines. So this is where diet comes into play when the ketogenic diet or when a low carb diet is at its finest is supporting that DHEA with the blood sugar regulation, as well as the cortisol with blood sugar issues. Now we need to kind of understand that DHEA and cortisol coming from the adrenals, our diet itself can cause stress if we're going super, super low carb and really pushing it and also fasting and going really hard at it. But if we are regulating our blood sugar properly, I've seen momentous changes to the DHEA and cortisol without supplementation, without bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. In the case of cortisol, we have chronic infections causing cortisol dysregulation. SIBO is a big piece of this. Uh, Medications like Accutane can be root cause to cortisol dysregulation. Thyroid imbalances, inflammation, stress, blood sugar issues, food sensitivities, When it comes to the thyroid being dysregulated, we always want to look at adrenal issues. We also want to look at mold. We want to look at nutrient deficiencies. So I bring all this up before we talk about bioidentical replacement therapy, because after the interview, I was like, okay, I love bioidenticals. I'm on a couple of them. I found a mixture that works really well for me. I was on them while I was addressing root causes because like what Ricky said at the, I think it was around the beginning of the episode, it's like when you can't get out of bed and you know that by taking progesterone, for example, it'll change that estrogen to progesterone ratio and start making you feel better, you're just going to do it. And then maybe you address some of the gut dysbiosis and nutrient needs while you're on the progesterone. So I just wanted to preface that. I also want to talk a tiny bit about diet just a little bit more because we didn't touch on it. And I think it's important. The role of blood sugar regulation on hormone management is huge. If you are eating a a beautiful whole food based ketogenic diet, you are supporting your hormones. If you are eating anywhere around I would say 50 to 150 grams of carbs per day, you're probably better off than most of the population dealing with hormone dysregulation. Understanding your blood sugar management and regulating this and supporting your metabolism and and resetting your metabolism is key for hormone balance. Another piece of this is inflammation. When we are heavily inflamed based on the foods we're eating, and these foods could be quote unquote healthy foods, like dairy for some people is just super inflammatory. I believe that dairy can be healthy for some people, but if it's inflaming you, it's going to affect the hormones. Same thing with gluten. We talked about this in the recording today with Ricky. If we have Hashimoto's, for example, and we are eating gluten, it is causing more inflammation, period, end of story. Okay. So inflammation and understanding the role that diet plays in this is big. That's why having an intermittent fasting period can be helpful so long as it's not spiking your cortisol, right? So everything plays plays a role. And so I just, when you're listening to today's episode, I really want you to think of a holistic view of things 
things, to take in all the conversations we've had here on the podcast and really place yourself in this conversation of based on where I'm at right now, do I need to investigate root causes and bioidenticals? Do I just need to investigate root causes? Or do I feel pretty confident that root causes have been cleared? I'm in a good place, but I really need help with the bioidenticals. And that's going to be completely individualized for you, your experience, your history. So let's get into today's episode. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm fascinated with helping women navigate how to eat, move, and care for their bodies using a low-carb diet. I'm a small-town holistic nutritionist turned three-time international best-selling author turned functional medicine practitioner, offering telemedicine services around the globe to women looking to better their health and stop second-guessing themselves. I'm here to teach you how to wade through the wellness noise to get to the good stuff that'll help you achieve your goals. We're supporting your low-carb life beyond the if-it-fits-your-macros conversation. Hormones, emotions, relationship to your body, workouts, letdowns, motivation, blood work, detoxing, metabolism. I'm providing the tools to put your motivation into action. Think of it like quality time with your bestie mixed with a little med school so you're empowered at your next doctor visit. Get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn about your body and how to care for it better. This is the Keto Diet Podcast. Hey, Ricky, how's it going today? It's going great. I'm super excited to be here. I'm so glad to have you here. We were talking about one of my favorite topics hormones. And you were saying, I have talked about hormones on the show a lot. And you're totally (laughs) right. It's one of my favorite topics. So thanks for coming on to chat about them today. Sure. It's one of my favorite topics too. So I can talk about hormones all day long. I love it. I love it. So for people that may not be familiar with your work, I know I did your official bio, but can you tell us a little bit about why you're doing what you're doing, what lights you up, the type of work that you're doing, and a little bit more about yourself? Sure. So I was, I, for a long time, I've been friends and uh, a colleague of a, one of the very first bioidentical hormone doctors in Utah Valley over 22 years ago. And we've just been friends and worked together on and off. And actually I, I helped him with his marketing. And then my wife started having troubles. We've had four kids, all four kids were at home and the home births went fantastic. On our last kid, he ended up in the NICU and my wife got depressed She put on lots of weight. She put on lots of weight with every kid. And I remember coming home one day and she was just kind of sitting on the couch and she looks up at me and she goes, man, I mean, I knew she was struggling, but I didn't know how bad she says, man, Ricky, I'm, I'm so thirsty and I've been sitting here for a while and I don't even feel like getting up off the couch to get a glass of water. Will you bring me a glass of water? Now I'm a man, right? So I want to fix this. <laughs> I'm like, let's go see Dr. Jones, my friend, right? He's fixing hormone problems every day. I'm sure this is hormone related. And she's like, no, no, I don't want to bug him. You know how you can't be a prophet in your own backyard. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I saw him fixing literally thousands of women because I helped him make videos. I helped him with his marketing, helped him with his websites. And I'm like, I want this for my wife. She puts it off, puts it off. We start going to the gym. It's taking everything she has to go to the gym. We go to our regular doctor. And of course, just like all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories I've heard, he says, your labs are normal. And she goes away. I don't feel normal. And so we're going to the gym. We're working out. My wife is working so hard using every bit she has to put into the workout, not just to lose weight, to feel good again. And the guy at the gym, her way, her name's Candy, the owner of the gym comes up and he says, you know, Candy, I've been watching you and your family work out. You should be getting better results. Have you ever had your hormones checked? So I just, I looked at her and she's like, I know, I know. We go see Dr. Jones. He does her labs. He looks at her labs and basically says, I don't even know how you can stand up. Some of these numbers are deplorable. One of them was her ferritin. She's always known she's anemic. He goes, he says this, and I I know you used to be a vegetarian, right? A vegan many years ago. Many, vegan, many. Right? Re- yeah, regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he almost, it was a telemedicine call. He almost leaped out of the screen at her and he says, please tell me you're not a vegetarian. And she goes, no, I eat plenty of meat. And he goes, why are your numbers so low? Are you taking any kind of iron supplement? She says, I am. He goes, what does your doctor say? 
And she says, well, he says, just keep taking the supplement. He's obviously you're not absorbing it. Your body's not using it. I'm going to change your supplement. I'm going to give you this food enzyme and I'm going to tell you when to take it every day. And that was the first thing he did. Anyways, long story, long story longer. (laughs) He helped my wife amazingly. She started coming back. She started waking up in the morning. Up till then, I was getting my kids off to school. I was doing all that. And I was fine doing that. But some days, you know, she had some depression and nothing that was ever, I would ever call clinical depression, but I would pull off to the side of the road and think, man, how am I going to do this? I've got four kids. I need them to do well. And and my wife's not doing well. I don't know what to do. You know, and you say a little prayer, inspire me, teach me what to do. So I finally started diving in deeper with Dr. Jones and got myself help, got her help. We started turning around. Our lives came back. He retired sold his practice. The new practice wasn't the same. I started looking for other hormone doctors. Now, I've been into herbs all along the way, even manufactured herbs along the way, private labeled them for pe- for different people. So I knew about that stuff. The bioidentical hormones were kind of new to me. Dr. Jones taught me a ton. After he retired, we're looking for someone good. And, and it became very apparent that there were a lot of marketing people just kind of jumping on the bandwagon of bioidentical hormones, just trying to sell you things and making money. They didn't really know what they were doing. They were like, like typing one key on the piano, right? To play a a song. They, they didn't play all the keys. They just hit the testosterone key or just hit the progesterone key. And they're not really helping people. So in a day of frustration, I called Dr. Jones and I said, man, I can't find anyone who does things like you do. And I have friends with the pharmacist and the pharmacist said, kept kind of teasing me saying, why don't you open a clinic? You and your wife know how you want this to be. Why don't you open a clinic? I go, I can't. I'm not a doctor. Why don't you open a clinic? You can hire doctors. I start talking to doctors and I find out most of them hate their jobs. They want to help people, but they're put in these corporate positions where they have these protocols that they're forced to follow. They want to help, but they can't. And the fear of God has been beat into them that if they do anything outside of protocol, not even outside of what's what's right, right? Just out of protocol for where they work. They're only allowed 15 minutes. You got to come in, you got to go out, you try to talk about anything. They say, don't worry about it. It's my problem because they don't have time to teach you. They want to because most people who got into medicine want to practice good medicine. They want to help people. That's why they did it. That's why they went to school all those years. And then they're stuck in these jobs that are jobs and they're not allowed to do it the way they want. And I learned that when we had our babies at home, right? Our first baby, we were, we were uh, going to a regular doctor and I heard midwives give great prenatal care, right? So we're going to a midwife and I'd go to the doctor and I'd ask a question or my wife would ask a question and he'd say, yeah, don't worry about it. That's my problem. And I'd go to the midwife the next week and we'd ask the same question and she would take 45 minutes to teach us and all the fear starts to dissipate because all of a sudden you understand. And then I found out, we found out the midwife had delivered more babies than the doctor did. <laughs> and we decided to go that route. And, and this is kind of where I started learning all this natural, real education, eliminating fear versus, I, I don't even like to use the word patient in our clinic because when you kind of say you're a patient, it kind of hits that regular neuropath of I have to be subservient to this doctor who's just going to tell me what to do and I can't speak my mind and say how I'm feeling. So I asked Dr. Jones, can I open a clinic? He says, absolutely you can. I go, will you coach me and teach me how to do it like you did it? He says, absolutely I will. I said, will you help me hire nurse practitioners and doctors? He says, absolutely I will. I'll even train them for you. And so we did it. And it's been, it's been awesome. I remember the first time a patient came out of their meeting and they were crying Her and her husband comes out, she's crying, and she said to my wife, who was working the front desk, she said, for the first time in my life, I feel like someone listened to me. And every once in a while, I'll pop on the telemedicine calls, because we do telemedicine all over. And just last week, I heard the same thing. I heard about a woman who was in menopause for the past 15 years. You know, she's been suffering with hot, hot flashes and night sweats and all of that stuff. And when she started, she had a little spot on her breast that turned out not to be cancer, but her doctor said, you should never touch hormones. So she didn't. But I have just as many studies, in fact, more studies, you know, they have these studies, the Women's Health Initiative that says that was only partially done and only for a certain demographic and a certain type of hormone that says, if you take hormones, you're going to increase your risk of breast cancer, among other things. And she heard that, and the doctor heard that, and and it's an incorrect study. 
and that's all they know, and they don't have time to study more stuff. And so she stayed away from it. And she came in, she met with us, and I jump on the calls every once in a while with permission, just going to listen in, see how it's going. And uh, her husband cut the doctor off halfway through, and he said, thank you. You've taught us more today in 20 minutes than we have learned in the past 15 years. Thank you. And they get started. In fact, her next appointment is tomorrow. And I'm so excited to hear how she's doing because, okay, I'm giving you a long, long answer, but the truth is it made such a difference in my life. I knew there was a lot of really crappy care out there, people just trying to make a buck off of hormones. And we wanted to really help people. And it's rewarding. And yeah, we make money. There's two things, you know, I can't keep giving from an empty cup, but I give as much as I can. And you women and everyone else can't keep giving giving from an empty cup either. I found out my wife's cup was completely empty and she's trying to give to everyone first before herself. We need to get her cup full and overflowing so that she can give from the overflow. And I found the hormones did that for her. So I want to be a part of it. Now, I don't think I love hormones, but I don't think they're a one size fits all uh, fix for everything. And so our philosophy here is kind of that uh, we use hormones to get you feeling great again so that you can live a wellness lifestyle. So many people come in here and they've been to health coaches or whatever. And the health coaches, and you know this, start counting your macros, do this, do that, do that. My wife didn't even feel like cooking dinner. And they're telling her, do this, do that, do this, you know? And she's like, oh my gosh, I can't do all that. We had to get her feeling good again. Then all that. I mean, we saved money on our, on our food bill when we started feeling good again because we didn't have to eat out all the time to feed our kids because we now felt like cooking. So I believe in, in health coaching, diet, nutrition, but sometimes for some people, that's not where you start. You got to get them feeling good enough to follow that because it's hard to do all that stuff if you feel terrible. I don't even know if I answered your question. I'm sorry. You totally <laughs> did. You shared so many pieces and I want to touch on a couple of the items that you mentioned and really pull from some of the pieces so that people really hear what I'm hearing you say. And I think what all of us really desire is to feel heard by the practitioners that we're working with. That's a big thing to be seen and heard and also to be to learn about about our bodies so that when we are at home and we're on cycle day three, we know what to expect. We know what's happening with our body. We know what it feels like when maybe estrogen is too low in this cycle or whatever it is that you're experiencing. The learning about your body and understanding what's going on, it is, oh, it's just so transformational. And I think a lot of people are seeking that and they can't find it. And so people like you and I, it sounds like your, your um, practice as well as mine is all about that education piece and is, it is so necessary. So I really wanted to pull on that. And I also wanted to pull on um, the root cause pieces. And I, I agree with you. Many of the clients that I work with also I'm not calculating their macros, even though they really want me to, because they really want to lose weight and they just want the macros. They just want that workout program that's going to make it for them. But I'm like, if your DHEA is tanked and you don't have testosterone, you can work out all you want and you are not going to gain a pound of muscle and you're just going to increase your cortisol and you're going to get more heavy. So right. right. That extra exercise with uh, an empty cup adds to your stressors. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that piece is really important to understand. I also want to touch on when hormones may not be the only part of the puzzle. What I've seen in my practice is like, for example, um, if you're, I'm making this really simple, but if your testosterone is low, but you have massive hypothyroidism, if you just add a testosterone pellet into your body, which is a very common practice to do, and your thyroid is already sideways, your testosterone just like, it's not going to work in my experience. Yeah, Have you right. seen that root cause wise where hormones are beneficial, but they may not be the be all end all in a holistic program? Yes. Amen. 100%. I see that. You said a couple things. See, now you're, now you're giving me things, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first thing is some people say, well, can I just start with one hormone or two hormones? And the answer is no, they all work together. 
And when you brought up like DHEA and cortisol, those are hormone in that same hormone, right? DHEA is precursor that helps you make hormones and cortisol. People talk about adrenal fatigue, but it's actually kind of more of HPA axis dysfunction, right? It it may be showing up as adrenal fatigue, you know, maybe you have a high cortisol, but that might be caused by three or four other things. And one of those things might not be hormones. Well, it, it will be hormones, but it will be hormones because you have a really, you know, you, you might have these stressors like blood sugar imbalances, or you might have other stressors like mental, emotional stress. When we talk about stressors, people always think, yeah, I have a stressful life or a hard job, but you also just might have terrible sleep, which is making all this go out of whack. You also might have inflammation. And the inflammation might be due to an autoimmune disease that you don't even know you have. And so all of those fit together. And so it's not just one hormone, it's many hormones, it's nutrition, it's lifestyle. And sometimes you can find those things just by talking and people don't even realize. I mean, for example, people are doing these cortisol tests and they do them all day long and they take four to six tests, right? And they have this awakening cortisol response. But if you laid in bed for a half an hour before you got up and did it, that's going to change your cortisol too. And so I always like when I do those tests, and I don't do them all the time, right? I don't think I need them all the time. But I'll have people keep a log about what they were doing all day. Because sometimes you see this weird spike in the afternoon. And you're like, why the heck did their cortisol spike at 3 p.m.? Well, you find out they went out and worked out at two o'clock. <laughs> and so that's important too, right? There's no, why can't I go to sleep? Well, you're working out at 8 p.m. and you want to go to sleep at 9 p.m. or 9.30 or whatever. We might need to change that. Or I eat big meals at night because I work a night shift or, or whatever, right? All of those things add up. So it's important not to just treat the labs. You have to treat the person. And labs are important, and we use them to get started. And I I know there's so many really detailed labs, right? And if someone is chronic or really has a weird situation, then I need more labs. But for the most part, for 80% of the people, we can look at a standard set of serum labs. And I know there's way better detailed labs. But for the most part, you know, people say, oh, I need to retest in this many. Yes, a few things, but I don't need to retest everything. We're going to treat the person, not the labs. And people say, people say, well, uh, I need to see where my numbers are. Great. What do you want your number to be? What do you want it to be? That's the only reason to test. Maybe we test when you're feeling great and we see what those numbers are. And guess what? In the next five to 10 years, those numbers where you feel great are going to change because you're aging and all these other things are happening. You know, we'll have women who have been at a hormone doctor for 10 years and then they they come in here and they say, boy, everything's, I'm doing what I used to be doing and it, it doesn't work anymore. Well, guess what? You're 10 years older. Your body reacts different. There's some bioidentical hormones I would put a 30-year-old on that I wouldn't put a 60-year-old on, you know? One of those is oral estrogen. You hit a certain age, we're going to move to a cream. Or most of the time, we're going to do a cream if it doesn't move the needle, do oral. But if you're 60 years old, I'm not going to put you on oral estrogen, right? If you're on progesterone. if (laughs) Rarely do I use progesterone as a cream. Usually, I'll do it orally because it works different in your body once it goes through your liver and does different stuff. So these, these ranges are important, But you have to realize when you get your lab test and you look at those ranges, they are an average of old people, young people, healthy people, sick people, and they're also ran through the insurance actuators who go, where can we let people be before they get too sick? And how low can we let them be before we spend too much money on paying for things? And that's who kind of helps set those numbers. It's not just the doctors. We think we're going in, oh, that range was there to measure good health. And guess what? Your numbers may be completely different than my numbers. It's like, I always think of it like like the poverty level. I don't know what the poverty level is, but let's say it's $25,000 a year is poverty level. I don't know what it is exactly, but let's say it's that. If you're making $25,500 a year, hey, you're above poverty. Let's not go get you a better job until you get completely in poverty. Then we'll work on... That's how a regular endocrinologist looks at you. We'll wait till you're below range, then we'll treat you to just get you back into range. 
at low normal, at just above poverty, guess what? Just above poverty at $25,500 a year is very different than $35,000 a year, which is still within that low range. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in low normal. I want to live in high optimal. And so we work to get you to high optimal where where you feel great. And there's some people, and you do have to know your body. We have some women who are on thyroid. They're taking T3, and they just kind of know that in the wintertime, they almost like on clockwork, they know from this month to this month, they've been doing it for so many years, I need to increase my T3. And it's in their chart. You can look in their chart and see it for year after year after year. And they just know that during those, and I, why is it that way? I'm not sure. <laughs> But they know their body, and we have to we have to negotiate back and forth. Our job is to keep you safe and listen to you and help you get to where you feel great without getting you too high or without letting you be too low. And what's the perfect magic number? I don't know, because one size doesn't fit all. Completely. We know that we lose muscle as we age and that this loss massively affects our ability to function. Like I'm talking basic tasks here. Muscle is important for protecting our joints and also keeping our metabolism revving. Basically, you want muscle. And unfortunately, a lot of us just don't prioritize muscle maintenance or see it as an importance. And you may also be cringing at the idea of going to the gym and being able to maintain that muscle consistently. Yes, active moving is super good, and there's really nothing like it when it comes to the mood boost of pumping iron. (laughs) So when I share about Urolithin A, I am not saying just to do this and you can maintain your muscle without movement. Well, like I am saying that because Urolithin A does do that, but I think pairing Urolithin A with exercise is likely the best path forward. So I started taking a product called MitoPure to boost my performance and improve muscular strength. And MitoPure has 500 milligrams per serving of urolithin A, a postbiotic shown to have major benefits to significantly increasing muscle strength and endurance with no other change in lifestyle. Yes, you heard that right. I just said that it has major benefits to significantly increase muscle strength and endurance with no other change to lifestyle. It gives your body the energy it needs to optimize its cellular power grid through boosted mitochondrial health without changes to lifestyle or diet. Now imagine what it could do with your low carb diet and a walking goal or a lifting goal a couple of times per week. It took me a long time, like a couple of months to introduce MitoPure to my day because it's so strong. Every time I took it, I almost had too much energy, so I really had to titrate up. MitoPure is the first product to offer a precise dose of urolithin A to upgrade mitochondrial function, increase cellular energy, and improve muscle strength and endurance. They've created three ways to get your daily dose of 500 milligrams of urolithin A in their product, MitoPure. They've got a delicious vanilla protein powder that combines muscle building protein with the cellular energy of MitoPure. Now this product does contain whey protein. And then they have a berry powder that easily mixes into smoothies or just about any drink. This is dairy free. And finally the soft gels, which is what I prefer because it's just easier. This is also dairy free. I love the starter pack idea though. If you can handle the dairy, the three forms of MitoPure to play around with which one is your favorite top notch. So timeline, the creators of MitoPure is putting together a sweet little offer for you 10% off your first order. So if you go to timeline nutrition.com slash KDP and use the code KDP, you'll get 10% off your order. Again, that's timeline nutrition.com slash KDP. I recommend trying their starter pack with all three formats and picking out your best format. Again, that's timeline nutrition nutrition.com slash KDP. I think calcium plays a role in why thyroid hormones are needed more during the winter because we'll get less vitamin D like sun exposure, which affects the vitamin D, which, which affects the calcium, which affects the thyroid. I think that's why 
I would need to investigate further because I have seen that pattern also because normally a, a higher calcium will equate to more of a hypothyroid characteristic. And I know that generally speaking, if your calcium is like 9.9, 10, like just a little bit higher, it'll start to creep up in those winter months. And I have seen that. And I think that calcium is kind of playing a role maybe with the vitamin D, but I love I love that idea of the poverty line and kind of explaining overall the difference between those big ranges you're going to see on blood work and then the functional ranges that we would use in a practice to really determine how a person displays. And another piece of that, and you mentioned this, I think previously is just overall symptoms. I think that's also really important of not chasing the numbers. For example, I just actually met with a client earlier today and her hormones are looking really good. Her, her DHEA is still like a little bit lower than what I would like, but we went through all the symptoms and she has no low DHEA symptoms and she's feeling great and she's progressing and things are good. I'm not going to go in there and tweak things if she's not experiencing any of the issues. And so I think that's also really important. And you touched on that a little bit of like knowing when to stop the tweaking and knowing when to just hold steady at a certain place. And I think that could be another red flag. I mean, it really depends on the practitioner and all the things, but if you're constantly retesting, especially hormones, if you're constantly retesting and you are feeling better and all the symptoms are adjusting you should be able to determine what's going on, generally speaking, month to month, especially if you're, if you're having a cycle. If your cycle is consistent and you're not having PMS and all those pieces are kind of in place, would you agree that there comes a point where it's like, okay, the numbers are great and all, but right now we have this plan, we're facilitating the plan, we're seeing adjustments, so like, let's wait for a little bit longer before we test again. Would you agree? Yes, we don't need to go crazy with it. Also, The goal is to get you feeling good. And I believe you have intuition that you know when you feel normal or not. That's why you're going to the doctor in the first place. I don't feel normal. And he looks at your labs and says, well, your labs are normal, technically, or or, this is worse, normal for your age. Oh, (laughs) yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you go away, you're like, I don't feel normal. If women are going into menopause and the problem is low estrogen, if that's the problem, and they keep going back to their doctor and he's afraid to put them on, he or she is afraid to put them on any kind of hormones, guess where they end up? I see it all the time. They end up on an SSRI or an antidepressant. If the problem is estradiol, then why are we giving them an antidepressant? Give them estradiol. Or if it's progesterone, give them progesterone or the both or whatever. If it's thyroid, give them thyroid. And this, they're afraid of it because of all those studies on the synthetics, certain kinds, right? Primarin or Primpro, which were synthetic. I'll give you an example. Progesterone, right? The synthetic form of progesterone is progesterone acetate. If you look at it under a microscope... It has kind of the core elements of what your body makes of progesterone, but there's a a methyl group and an acetate group plugged onto it, which makes it something totally different and makes it patentable. And then they can patent it and sell it and corner the market on it and give it a fancy name. If you look at bioidentical hormones, which is still technically synthetic because it's made in a lab, right? From plants and things like that. So, but it, and then you take some progesterone from your blood and you look at them under a microscope, they look exactly the same. And that's why they don't cause cancer. That's why they don't cause all these other side effects is because it's exactly what your body makes. If hormones were bad, we would take out everyone's ovaries at age 30. We'd just take them out if hormones are bad for you. But they fight this thing of that hormones are bad, no hormones are good, no hormones are bad. Look, your body makes them, they're good. Then there's these people that come along and they say, Well, if you start taking hormones, then your body's going to stop making hormones. Okay. Yeah. If you're taking crazy high amounts, but if you're taking within range, your body's going to still keep working. And also it's not making them now. (laughs) I remember, right? It's okay. You're, you're not making them now anyways. So how do you want to change that? Right. And I do believe in herbal supplements, diet, and lifestyle. It can move the needle, but sometimes it doesn't move it enough. And these bioidentical hormones, I can show you 
stacks and stacks that fight against all the other stacks, right? Progesterone, when they used to do uh, breast cancer surgery in the old days, they would wait until your cycle when the progesterone was at its highest because progesterone actually stopped the spread of breast cancer. And given bioidenticals and the right amounts, it lowers your chance of breast cancer. I've seen testosterone and progesterone and all of those things lower and reduce, uh, actually remove type 2 diabetes because now you're getting rid of visceral fat. You're building your heart, which is a muscle, which testosterone is great for. And even in, even in men, same thing. I've seen it. And then these ranges are there. Sometimes the ranges, some labs give them in, in these numbers like, like let's, let's talk thyroid, right? Maybe it's, maybe one of your thyroid numbers is 2.2, but the range is 2 to 3.4 or something or 3.5 like that, right? And you go, well, that's not, that's not too big of a number. Move the decimal a point. Move the decimal point one place. And now think of it as 220 versus 350. It's a big range. Men's testosterone, women need testosterone, but they need very little. Men's testosterone range right now is 300 to 900 on most labs. That's a huge gap, 300 to 900. So if I'm at 301, they go, ah, you're within normal range. I feel like crap, but I'm within normal range. And you start getting 400, 500 doctors freaking out, right? Oh, you're getting pretty high and you're, <laughs> no, man. And gosh, you could be in the 14, 1500s and be just fine. And people say, oh, no, you're going to get roid rage. I got to tell you, my testosterone was in the dumps. I was using a cream. I went to my regular doctor for a physical, and he said to me, all hormone doctors are quacks. You need to get off that stuff. And I started arguing with him. You, you don't understand. I didn't even want to get out of bed and go to work. I was depressed. And, and he goes, okay, I'll test you. And if you're low, I'll let you stay on it, was how he said it. And I was using the cream at the time. He tested me. And guess what? I was still below range. And this was before we had the clinic. So he moved me to an injection, which he was floored. He's like, I've never done that before. And so he moved me to a higher dose than the hormone doctor had me on. Of course, when I started doing this, I even doubled it after that. Now people say, oh, you're going to have roid rage. If my doctor saw it, he would say, you're going to have roid rage. And I got to tell you, and my wife would swear to this, I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband because I'm not operating on my last nerve. I've got a cup that's overflowing. And so I have room to give. When my kids would test me and I was standing on my last nerve, I blew up all the time because it took everything I had just to get through the day. Now I can get through the day and I have plenty to give to my kids and to give to my wife. And I wake up happy. I wake up. And this is, this is what hormones do for you. This is what this lifestyle change and this getting everything in balance, they all work together. There's a reason. When women come in, and I make them bring their husbands or their spouse or whoever their significant other is. And there's this moment of realization when you go, oh, just judging from your labs, I can, and the, and the doctor starts to tell them, yeah, I'll bet this happens. And they just start relaying the common symptoms and they go, absolutely. It's like you have a crystal ball. And then you say, for three days, four days of the month, she's the wicked witch of the West. And the husband goes like, yeah. And he thinks all this time that she just hates him. And then you say, but she can't help it. She really can't help it. And then the spouse or significant other or whatever is, okay, great. How can we get, get her started? And then the next thing is, she says, how do we get him started? Because he's just a freaking couch potato. This stuff is good. Educate yourself. Get with a practitioner or a health coach or someone who understands it and has the heart of a teacher. Because when you understand it, then you can start working with them and you can start saying, well, I'm feeling this way. What do I do? And we do that all the time. We start people on very little progesterone. I don't do pellets. I'm not against pellets, but I'm against pellets in the beginning. Most of the time, I will never do pellets. Same. Because you need to be able to adjust up and down. I've had people come in here with acne and all these hormone... <laughs> Raging and you can't do anything. Yeah, what do you do? Hold on for the ride because you're going to be this way for four months before it wears off. Can't yeah. take them out. Nope. And you need to be able to adjust up and down for different times of the month. Sometimes you need extra progesterone. Sometimes you don't. And it's okay to do that. None of these things are going to kill you. You know, you got to be careful with testosterone and you got to be careful with them. I don't, I don't mean it's not like, it's not like herbs. They're not like whole food supplements. You don't just want to go crazy. That's why you need that practitioner or that coach to help you understand how they work 
and you talk to them and they say, why don't you try this? They're keeping you safe. But it's not uncommon for us to have someone double their progesterone before their next appointment because they called up and they said, this is happening. I know I've gone too far if they call up and they say, man, I'm so groggy in the morning, I can't get up. Well, you got a progesterone hangover. Let's cut that back a little bit. <laughs> Those but are the gonna, worst. I remember my first progesterone so great. Hangover. And this might take three to four months to get you feeling pretty good or five months. But some people with some of those symptoms, like you, I've had people on the very first night of their progesterone, they sleep better than they've slept in years. And guess what? If you're sleeping good, your body's repairing and healing. Your cortisol starts getting better. I didn't give you anything for your cortisol, but you're sleeping. And so one of those stressors, like sleep, is going away. And so everything starts working better. And you wake up refreshed. And and yeah, your ferritin affects your thyroid. Your testosterone and your thyroid work together. All of those things work together. We check for Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease. And yeah, okay, so I'm against synthetic hormones. Unless you have Hashimoto's, I'm not going to give you natural hormones. It's going to throw your Hashimoto's through the roof. It's going to, you know, you're going to have inflammation all over. <laughs> and so in that case, if you have Hashimoto's and autoimmune disease, we're going to give you a, 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 a synthetic thyroid. And all of those, they just work together in a beautiful way when you have the education and you don't need to be afraid of them. So many people are afraid of them. You need to be afraid of them if you're just beating one key <laughs> on the piano. You need to be uh, leery of pellets. First of all, I don't like the idea of anyone injecting any kind of thing in me like that. But also, you don't know how your body's going to utilize it, how much it's going to utilize. I want you to be able to adjust up and down based on how you're feeling, and I want you to be able to do that quickly. Mm -hmm. yes, I just completely. threw it all over you. Now, what do I, now where do we go? <laughs> so I met this team of people many years ago. It was probably 2003. 14, 15 or so at a conference. And they said, we are making these paleo sticks. They are different than any other meat stick on the market because they are fermented and each stick contains 1 billion CFUs of probiotics. At the time I was living in Canada and I could not get these sticks. I remember Kevin and I loading up our RV and driving to Montana to drive to the owner's parents' house to pick up these sticks. Now fast forward a whole bunch of years and these are now the Paleo Valley grass-fed beef sticks. They are my favorite snack. They have been for almost 10 years. I always, always have one in my purse, sometimes two. They are my go-to snack. They're helpful for the gut. They strengthen your immune system they're gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, freaky chemical, additive dye, preservative-free. Many of the flavors are 100% free of carbohydrates. And the best part, they are absolutely delicious. I am so happy that I took a chance, loaded up my RV, and <laughs> grabbed those sticks. It was like a really long trip. I think it was something like 12 hours of driving to get these things. And I'll never forget the first time I had a whole bag to myself. The flavor is unchanged. The product quality unchanged over all these years. I love my Paleo Valley grass-fed meat sticks. You can head on over to paleovalley.com slash keto and get 15% off your order of their meat sticks. Again, that's paleovalley.com slash keto. I think what's what's going through my mind as I oftentimes try to listen as a listener and try to interpret what the community would be thinking as you're talking. And I think what maybe a bunch of women are thinking right now is like, why does my body need this? Like, shouldn't I be able to make enough? Why is this a problem? Why do I need to rely on something outside of my body to help me? Like, why is this happening where it wasn't happening a hundred years ago? Why is this a solution now? Do you know where I'm getting with that? It's like, yeah, why there's, do a, I there's even a feeling of, of, am I that broken? Why can't my yeah. body heal itself? Just like figure it out. And like, not everybody is on this and they're fine. Why do I even need all of these hormones? Cause I mean, in usually it ends up being quite an expensive process depending on who you're working with. And you talked about that at the beginning, I got wrangled up into that before I was a practitioner. I ended up spending thousands of dollars pressing the one key. Oh, that didn't work. Press the other key that didn't work. And so there's a lot of busy work. And I think um, what could be helpful is just a conversation around like, why is this happening? How do we make sure that we don't get taken advantage of? 
where you're playing multiple keys at the same time and, and why why is this happening is it just that we actually need progesterone is it just that we actually need testosterone like i know that like in the case of progesterone you can take progesterone all day long but if you have parasites or severe gut dysbiosis it's not really going to work. And so th there needs to be this, like, and we talked about that a little bit, this kind of looking at the whole body, this holistic approach. Um, but I think one of the concerns that listeners might have is like, why do I need this? Yeah. And that's kind of, there's a lot of reasons, right? The world has changed. We were never meant to go at 150% like we keep going. More is expected out of us now. We also live longer than we used to live. And there are more toxins and environmental stresses. Our food is terrible. It's not nutritious, really. And all of those things add up. And what we're seeing is people entering menopause younger and younger, men having low testosterone younger and younger. And these aren't men who are bodybuilders who just want to bulk up. They come in feeling terrible. They want to give up. And we kind of have this thing, right, that we, the neuroendocrine theory of aging. And it's, uh, do my hormones get lower because I'm getting older? Or am I getting older because my hormones are lower? <laughs> This is this catch-22 question, right? I think we have too many. I don't know the, the perfect answer, but I think we have more stressors than our body can handle. When I strictly did herbs and natural healing, you know, my, I lived by the process of cleanse, nourish, and then heal. If you cleanse your body, then you nourish it with the right stuff, then your body has what it needs to heal. I don't know a garden hose that you can cut in half and it'll heal itself but you can cut yourself and your body will heal itself. Now, why does your body scream out in pain? Because it needs something, right? And there's a, a, a great set of herbs from a company called Dr. Christopher's Original Formulas. I don't know what they name it now, but back in the day, they called it BF and C. It was a terrible name. Bone, flesh, and cartilage had all these wonderful herbs that would help you rebuild bone and cartilage. And I knew this kid who broke his elbow and his mom, she called herself Dr. Mom. She'd go around lecturing. She starts putting poultices on it, soaking it in, in these herbs, these dark, rich herbs. And she's giving him capsules, which are whole food supplements. And, you know, you know, those labels that say take two to three capsules three times a day. But when you're talking to a real herbalist, they're taking handfuls of them. And it's so right, true. It's they so know, true. They know it's a whole food and it's not going to kill them. And those labels are there just to abide by laws. And her son's elbow, he, he didn't need the pain medication like he needed it before they got all these herbs in him. And the idea here, though, is that when you have what you need to fix it, your body can stop screaming. And that's why you need the hormones. You've got to get them up so your body stops screaming at you, right? Our body needs aluminum. <laughs> There's that study that's actually been defunct which was about Alzheimer's and it being an accumulation of aluminum on the brain. And they found the guy that was doing the test was, was <laughs> testing uh, the particles out of aluminum dishes. That's why the aluminum was so high. <laughs> but for the longest time, an herbalist approach to an accumulation of aluminum on the brain would be herbs high in aluminum. And you go, why? That's so counterintuitive. Because your body needs aluminum, it would attach to whatever form of aluminum you had. Aluminum from pots and pans, aluminum from cans, which isn't what your body needs. But aluminum from licorice root or things like that is what your body needs. So the moment you put the right kind of aluminum in, the body lets go of the toxic aluminum because now it has a better one to use. And so this is synthetic hormones aren't perfect for you, but they mimic hormones and they'll use them. But if you give it the bioidentical right kinds of hormones, your body starts functioning properly, starts repairing properly in other areas, areas we don't even know about. This is kind of the way I think, right? Whether it's right or not, I don't know. You can find out for yourself. Everyone hates to go on hormones. I hated to go on hormones. I didn't want to take testosterone. I don't want to take it for the rest of my life. But I want to live at high optimal. And once you feel the effects of it and start thinking clearly again, you got to get past the I am broken stage and you get into the I am in charge stage and you're like, okay, I'm feeling good. You ever get in a, a car, that a, someone else's car and it wobbles, you know, it's jerky and it's wobbling all over and you, you go to the, like, like you get into your spouse's car and you're like, how do you drive this thing? And they go, what do you mean? Well, it wobbles all over. It pulls to the left. 
And they, it well, doesn't do that for me. You, yes, it does. You just don't notice it because it got out of balance slowly. And I, I'm not driving in your car. I hop in that thing and I can feel how out of balance it is. And it's out of control for me. And I think all the people who come into our clinic or who come to see you, they're out of balance and they're out of control. And all of these things are to help you get back into balance. And I know you hate to take them. Shouldn't my body take care of itself? I remember... When we had our last child, our fourth child, and we ended up in the NICU for those, gosh, I'll bet you for two years, my wife had the narrative in her brain that she should have been able to take care of that baby. And it must have been something that she did that made him end up in the NICU. If I would have just taken care of myself better, if I would have, this was the narrative in her head. It was her fault. It was her body's fault. She was broken. And that just simply wasn't true. I mean, maybe, but it wasn't her fault. You know, and, and so this is the same feeling we have when we have to take hormones or we have to take supplements or we have to take, it's funny, no one has any problem taking multivitamins. And you say, why do you take multivitamins? And they say, well, I want to be healthy and live long. That's the same reason you take hormones. I had a doctor argue with me once and he said, you're messing with the natural systems of the body. You shouldn't be doing that. This is natural aging. It's not just about anti-aging. You're messing with this. I noticed he wore glasses. I said, do me a favor, take off your glasses and throw them away because your eyes going bad is just part of the natural aging process. You should just learn to live with that. Well, I wouldn't be able to see. Well, then why are you interfering by putting these glasses on? Why do we interfere by getting heart surgery? Why do we interfere by getting a stint put in when you need to? That's interference. Well, I have to do it to live. What kind of life is low normal? You don't have anything left to give to your family or the ones you love. You don't have anything left to give to yourself. And I've noticed women especially, even my wife won't buy herself clothing. She'll buy kids clothes. Kids need clothes first. You all get to eat first. I'll eat the leftovers. You have what you want. And then I'll have what I want that's left over after. I want to make sure you all get enough to eat. This is natural for women. You have to retrain yourself. You can give more. It's like in the airplane that's going down. You know, they say, put the oxygen on yourself. Then you can help the people around you. If you don't put the oxygen on yourself first, you die and you help nobody. Get over it. Feel great again. I know it feels terrible. Play the mind game, whatever. Start feeling good again. And then you'll have the mind space and the resources and the mental RAM to learn and educate yourself to take care of your body better. So you need less and less outside intervention from doctors or clinics. You'll learn how to take care of yourself with your lifestyle. You'll know what you need. And sometimes you got to put the oxygen mask on you first so that you can take care of those around you because you want to be this strong, powerful person that nothing's... Men are worse. You got to drag them into the clinic. Usually it's their wives that bring them in here, unless they're those muscle guys looking for testosterone. But men are fine, men are fine, men are fine. They get pretty terrible before they come in. Frankly, the women do too, because they don't want to be broken, but it's more broken to stay broken. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if any of that made sense or helped. It's more broken to stay broken. I love that so much. It's so perfect. Yes, completely. One piece that we didn't fully go into, and we probably won't have time today, maybe you can tell us a resource that you have, is really determining, I know that you have an online test. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because we didn't talk a lot about symptoms and how it relates to certain highs and lows. And I'm guessing that's what the test is on. Can you tell us a little bit about that piece? Yeah. The online test is, yeah, you just click on what symptoms you have. And it spits back, <laughs> it spits back, hey, you might be high in this, you might be low in this, you might be high in this, you might want to check this out. And most of the time, I have people going, like, that test was spot on, like those symptoms. And it, so I, you know, they, they don't even want a blood test. They come in, they say, my test said this, it's really easy, takes five minutes, and you can get it through my website. You're going to talk about the giveaway that we have, and that'll get them to the test. The other thing is, like, yeah, there are symptoms. You know, if you sit down to watch a movie and you're always falling asleep, or you sit down to read a book and you're falling asleep, you probably have thyroid issues. Not the only issue. There's probably several other issues going on. But it, at first, you're going to say, oh, it's thyroid issues. There might be some other root cause. The back of your heels are dried and cracked. Your hair is like hay and it comes out. You, have, you probably have thyroid issues. If you can't go to sleep at night, 
either you can't get to sleep or you go to sleep and you wake up at 307 <laughs> and then you can't go back to sleep. And I say 307 because for you know, we tell some women that they go, for me, it's 222. Yeah. Because every night they wake up at the same time, same time and their mind is racing and they can't do That's progesterone. Estrogen is the exciting hormone and progesterone is the calming hormone. You might not have high estrogen, but you might have low progesterone. So you're going to have estrogen dominance and you can't calm down. You can't go to sleep. And then you get that progesterone up, balances it out, and you start sleeping and you get a full night's rest and you're calm again. Uh, bad PMS issues, those things, right? Progesterone. You, you know, of course, uh, low iron and ferritin is going to be, you're going to be sleepy and draggy. You can't get up. You're just, ugh. And most people who have thyroid issues, a high, high percent also have Hashimoto's. I'm surprised how many have Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks your thyroid. If you have that, you need to eat gluten-free. I'm sorry. You have to do it. And you're going to say, well, I don't have a gluten intolerance. I'm sorry. You have to eat gluten-free because it's going to cause inflammation. And any inflammation in your body is going to trigger that autoimmune disease. And, you know, we go on, we can talk about thyroid, we can talk about vitamin D, we can, uh, uh, you know, talk about B12, we can talk about DHEA and cortisol, and all of those things. Uh, but the symptoms, like, you don't have to know the exact symptoms. I think most of you know, if you have a hormone imbalance or not, you just know something's off. And I want to just kind of empower everybody to trust your intuition. And if a doctor or anyone's telling you, well, your labs are normal, your labs are normal, keep looking for a, someone with the heart of a teacher, and it's going to ring true to you. You also know when you're just being marketed to, when you're being offered a quick solution, this is going to fix you, it's going to be no thinking and no work for you. It's, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Like I said, hormones aren't going to fix you overnight. Diet nutrition isn't going to fix you overnight. It's going to take four or five months. To, you got to get into the game and you got to learn and you got to take care of yourself and you got to follow your intuition. And there's plenty of people happy to market you something. You trust your intuition. I'm telling you, you know. Completely, completely. And that website that people can go to check out the online test, that's freehormonebook.com. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Go to freehormonebook.com. You'll get the book or the audio book if you hate to read. You get the PDF or the audio. You get them both. And then at the end of that, on the download page, there's scroll down a little and there's a link that says, you know, free online hormone test or something. You click it, you put it in, you put in your email address and we'll kick you back the answers in a short time. And it, it kind of evaluates it based on your symptoms and sends you back. You might be high in this. You might be low in this. You might be high in that. And uh, it works pretty well. And it's not, it's not a huge, it's not pages and pages of answers. You'll do it in, in five minutes because the symptoms are common. And it's not a perfect test, but it, it does work and it points you in the right direction. And you're going to kind of go, ah, you, most people kind of go, yeah, I kind of knew that. That's why I say trust your intu intuition. You know it. And uh, if you're the one, like my wife, sitting on the couch, wanting a drink of water and you can't get up off the couch, you need to read this book going to connect with you. It's going to teach you some things, not just about hormones, but about diet and nutrition, even supplements. Most of the supplements on the health food store are crap. And it's going to teach you how to find the right ones. It's going to teach you a little bit about exercise, not in depth about any of that. You don't need to be a scientist. It's just going to help you recognize truth uh, so that you can recognize it again when you see it and when you sit down with a practitioner. There's so I'm so thankful that it's not taboo anymore. Hormones used to be taboo, all of this stuff. There's so many great health coaches now, so many great lifestyle coaches. And just make sure they don't tap one key on the piano. Make sure they're looking at all of you and listening to you. If they don't give you a chance to talk, you're probably with the wrong person. Completely. Such great advice, Ricky. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your story and sharing these tips. Super helpful. And again, for everyone listening who wants to check out that free book, either audio or PDF, if you like to read, I'm an audiobook girl myself, you can go to freehormonebook.com. Thanks again for coming on the show today. Awesome. Thank you. You're awesome. You're doing great work. And I'm so thankful for people like you. That was a blast with Ricky. I hope you had the best time learning from both of us today. I will see you back here for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. 
Thanks for listening. Join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Looking for more resources? Go to healthfulpursuit.com for keto meal plans, weight loss programs, low carb recipes, and oodles of free resources to get you going. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. Thank you.